Welcome to episode 66. The dudes are all here at the pub. Everybody's back, baby. Tim, the Dr. Fauna from downtown. Evan, Preacher Man Fitzsimmons. Devin, Slate Wall Slate. Matt, Nightlife Whitehorn. And the Queen, Sip of Death, Jay Greasy is in the building, baby. <laughs> Let's have a hell of a show, guys. I'm jacked up. I'm pumped up. This is exactly what we need for this week. Let's just dive right into it. We've got jam-packed episode. NFL, college football's back, baby? Question mark? Explanation part. Let's go. Baseball has been bumping. Yankees making a run. Hold the phone. Footy action. Legends on the move playing for different teams. Big stuff happening. But let's talk about one legend being cut today. Sir Cam Newton, cut, dead, done in New England. Mac Jones, QB1, Belichick, cut and Cam. Jay Gray, you're a big New England fan. How do you feel about this? You know, it's a little bit of a mixed bag for me. Um, I would have loved personally to see Mac sit a few games and and learn the ropes um, in the NFL kind of system, way of life. Um, But my, uh, my roommate and I were talking about it. And she brought up a really good point that you saw Cam on the field doing everything he was asked. Um, In the media, he was doing everything he was asked to do. So we're kind of assuming that something went on behind closed doors or that it was just, hey, he's not a fit for us, you know? Um, So it's going to be really interesting to kind of look more into the fallout. It seems like Cam's being um, very gracious um, for the opportunity with New England, uh, which is kind of nice so far. Um, and I mean, I'm just, I'm nervous because, I mean, we're all in on Mac, which is great, but we're also all in on Mac with Brian Hoyer as a backup. So we'll see how it goes. Um, we'll see how Mac can control the locker room because Cam was very much a locker room guy. Um, and I mean, all the games start at 0 0. Um, we got to trust the system and trust that. Uh, Mac is someone that Belichick wants there and that Belichick trusts. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm with you. Like ever since he was missing those five days due to COVID protocol, which all indication, like you said, it, it didn't seem like he was doing anything wrong. Um, not as bad as what the media was making it seem like. It's just, I think in those five days, Belichick looked, said, Hey, the team's behind Mac Jones. Like that's our dude now. Like we can cut cam now. Um, and I, I'm with you, Jay. I'm with you a hundred percent. Boys, anything to add to it? Yeah, I guess the biggest thing for me is why not keep him instead of Brian Hoyer? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're going to pay him any, either way. Yeah. He's going to get at least a chunk of the change. Yeah, I didn't understand that. I mean, you got like one of – definitely one of the more dynamic quarterbacks. I know he hadn't been playing that way, I guess, of, of late, but definitely still showed spots of that here and there. And especially, way more, I would imagine he's quite more athletic than Brian Hoyer. Yeah. like I, I think it's kind of all about a system at this point. I know Hoyer's been on the Patriots before. He's had different stints with them, whether it's backing up Brady or backing up Newton. Um, he's been there. And I think it's also someone that the team and the coaches trust. But, I mean, you haven't really seen him do anything. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and I think when I when it first broke, I was with you, Slate. I was like, Hoyer, like, why are you going to keep him over Cam? But at the same time, like, well, maybe they're trying to give Cam, like, hey, you're not QB1 here. You are a starting quarterback in one of these other 31 teams. Go see if you can go be a starter somewhere else. And, and may, that's how I took it. Uh, but at the same time, like, man, I'd much rather have Cam as a backup just in case than Brian. Yeah, I'm curious. I want to get to that. Like, where where is the landing spot for Cam? Or where are the landing spots? Which is funny because I feel like we did that before New England. Like, we were yeah. sitting here racking around the league, like, where would Cam be a fit? And and it's, you know, how quickly the, the tides change. But I actually want to first say what – I liked what Tim said last week about just the Mac Jones-Cam Newton situation – 
And Tim, you said it was just a perfect bridge. And, and I agree with that as I think, you know, let Max sit under cam cam. I mean, last year was a train wreck. It was, it was a bad situation. A lot of players were out because of COVID though. They didn't have their defense. It almost felt like cam wasn't really given a chance to, to really have the reins of this team. And now after a year of learning the offense, you got your defensive stars back. I think we were all excited to see Cam Newton. Like, you know, what can he do in this position? And knowing Mac Jones is in the shadow, you know, it, it was like, man, maybe that puts a, cha- a chip on Cam's shoulder that he's never really had to compete for the job. And I was just kind of disappointed that all this happened. But again, something may have happened behind closed doors. But it's just head scratching because I was with you, Tim. I, I thought it was a perfect bridge year. And I was excited to see what Cam could do. Yeah, it was actually funny. Um, this morning I was talking with one of my patients. And he's a betting, betting guy. And we were talking about Cam and Mac and all the rookie quarterbacks. And I was like, you know, you know, if you put it between Justin Fields and Mac Jones, I think Justin's going to see the field way before Mac does. <laughs> I literally, I wrap up with the patient. I go to lunch, I look at my phone and I see our group text and and you're talking about topics for tonight. And I said, it says cam release. And I was like, what? And I looked and I was like, oh my God, are you serious? You did this to cam. It's your fault. Uh, uh, I'll take the hit on that one. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I, I like where you're at, Evan. Um, I think it's a little sooner than I would have hoped, but um, I just want to see Cam succeed. You know, I last couple of years have been rough for him, but kind of going back to the vaccination thing, I think a lot of teams are going to be doing this. And, and Bill is, you know, certainly no exception of putting his team in the best position to win. And if you're starting quarterback is fighting protocols, that's, I don't know. That just puts a lot of things at risk. So just another fold for this season coming up. Yeah, I, you're absolutely right. Matt, what do you say? I know I got Cam hiding you there. I'll, I'll take him <laughs> off there. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. Um, well, I called it last week, didn't I? Um, I said back Jones get a star job, and uh, I was proven right unbelievably. I, I can't believe it. Um, yeah, something there's must have been a falling out between himself and the staff for him to be released. And I think it's I think he's, uh, he's done. Yeah, you think that's it? I think done. he's done. Wow. I think he's done. Okay, think... let's let's list the this, these are the landing spots where Cam could go. Okay. He could go to Denver, where I know there's Teddy and Drew Locke, but it might not be either of theirs. So that that's an opportunity. Cam, they might take him. Don't know. Don't know if Elway would would take Cam, but it's an option. Houston. Deshaun Watson's still in the air. It's Tyrod Taylor's at the moment, but that, that could open up for anybody. Washington, we talked about last week, Fitzmagic and Heineke. I think that one's a little bit more of a reach, but that could be a landing spot. And then the last one would be maybe Baltimore. And, and Cam just goes to back up Lamar just because that offense kind of suits him. And I thought of that when we were talking about where Cam would go um, before he landed in New England. We threw around Baltimore – as you know, the the Heisman team just throw just throw another Heisman in that offense. <laughs> but yeah, I think I, but I think that could work. I'm with you. I, I, we asked Instagram today, and uh, some people said Washington, and I'm with you. Like you get Heineke, you get Fitzmagic. I don't think you need a veteran presence. I don't think you need Cam. Plus, like yeah, Ron Rivera and Cam make sense as a rekindle like a rekindle relationship. But at the same time, like I don't know, man. I don't think it really fits their groove. Um, Somebody said Dallas has a backup to Dax, which, I mean, hey, but I I just don't see Cam wanting to be a backup. I really don't. So I have one more to add to that list. Just because I heard rumors floating through the air about Deshaun going here, maybe earlier this week, maybe it was last week, Miami. Though I think he would get in a lot of trouble in Miami. But Miami, um, who's behind Tua? Who's in front of Tua? I think he could compete with Tua for a starting job. I love that take, Jay. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely love it. Was I that don't... where Fitzpatrick was last year? 
Yeah. In Miami? Okay. Mm -hmm. I was like, who was there? Okay. That makes sense. Miami's winning the Super Bowl this year, by the way. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Your Red Skull theory from uh It's true. I'm last telling week. you, the more I've been thinking about it. Oh man. Yeah, I I I'm gonna be watching the waiver line really closely. I mean, NFL cuts are gonna happen for the next two weeks, guys. Usually it's just one week. Players have got to make it to next Saturday, not this coming Saturday, next Saturday, because we have an extra off-season, preseason week, uh, even though there's no game. So it's going to be really interesting to see where we're at. Uh, anything else cam-related we want to talk about? Cool. Let's move into it. Slate, I, it's part of preseason, and it's really unfortunate. The Ravens lost J.K. Dobbins. Torn ACL. Um, I was hoping it was just a concussion. You know, I saw him go in the blue on blue tent and that's all I saw. I didn't see like him limping or anything. I was like, Oh, blue tent concussion. Duh, done. Uh, go back and watch the film. I was like, Oh no, that's an ACL. And that's what it's confirmed. And that's a big blow to you Ravens. Yeah. I mean, it definitely, definitely hurts, but um, I, re I really like Gus Edwards. I think we're, we're going to be fine. Uh, if anything, it's just going to make us probably have to work a little bit harder uh, and establish a better passing game so that Gus can have those running lanes. Um, and plus there's there's those rumors swirling around about Gurley and all this other stuff. We've also got Justice Hill, who's uh, before J.K. was out, he was in the threes, and he's always been pretty solid for us in the run game, especially hitting up, up those uh, uh, mid part of the year. Uh, downs, he gets a few more snaps then just to kind of, you know, workload management and stuff like that. So I really think we're going to be fine. I uh, hate it for JK. I was really looking forward to it. At, like I told y'all, I drafted him. He was my, I drafted back to back to back running backs in my fantasy league this past weekend. And he was my third one, spent a decent amount of money for him. So it definitely hurt, but immediately picked up Gus on the waiver wire and. Uh, we're just gonna kind of run with it from there until something else pops up. Yeah, I mean Gus the bus, it, he he got hot last season, and I don't see any reason why you don't ride him. And, and you're right, you, there is some depth there. But yeah, boys, anything about J.K.? I think well, I think with Harbaugh and the Ravens, I think they will try to get a committee of guys. Like they might sign two running backs here, and I don't know who they're going to sign. Like, I don't know if Gurley, you know, the rumors swirling about that. I don't know if that's what they're looking for. But they just need – they just need some different looks. And, and Gus is great in, in certain situations, but I don't know – I don't know if they're going to just go ahead and say, all right, we're just going to – we're just going to, like – obviously you're going to increase Gus's workload. But I think they are trying to find uh, a committee that's going to be that's going to be helpful. And it also sucks that they just sent Ingram to Houston. I mean, J.K. was going to be their guy, and they had they had a great running back tandem last year. Um, so yeah, it's just it's unfortunate. You got to reshuffle the cards a bit. Yeah, I forgot. You know, they they did trade away and and just like, hey, J.K.'s our guy. Gus, like they'll have a two headed monster and. Yeah, I forgot all about that. Yeah, I was excited to see Dobbins. I, I'm with Devin. I drafted him in my league. I was really high on him, you know, because everyone's got these – some of these rookies are up high, and, like, Clyde edwards Lair went really high. And I'm looking at – I'm like, J.K. Dobbins is about to tear it up. Like, you know, when he came in last year, he was a beast. So, – yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, and I think, you know, as we look at the other running backs who are hurt right now, you know, Cam Akers, you know, was was a second year back. I think we were excited to see. And then and then Etienne, a rookie. Uh just you hate to see it with with a young running back. You don't you and especially in like preseason or training camp. That that's just the worst. It it just it just stings a little extra. One word yeah. in. It's it's pronounced Etienne. ETN. I apologize. Yeah, ETN. <laughs> we got the Clemson faithful on here. Yeah, I know. You can't be talking. You're mad. You're mad trashed anymore. All right. I'm holding back. Not today. Not today. <laughs> yeah. These I, are all good reasons to just cancel preseason. I know we talked about it. Just get rid of it. It's useless. 
Yeah, but then at the same time, like for guys who are undrafted, they're trying to make a roster. Maybe they're not trying to make that team, but maybe they're trying to put film out there so another team can sign them. So I would feel for those guys if they cancel preseason. Just, I think if you absorb maybe even two, even just one of those games and expand the roster spot by maybe five or six positions, I don't know. It makes it a little more flexible, but it's just like it's this exact reason. Like you have all these Super Bowl contenders or people, teams trying to make a run, and then your running back gets hurt or. You know, you have linemen going down. Well, it's like, okay, these are all fundamental pieces to a good team, and there goes the depth. So, I don't know. To me, it just takes away from the game a little bit. I'm actually – I don't – that's not a crazy take, Tim. Like, I don't understand preseason sometimes. Like, I understand, like, where it's, like, later on the roster that you got to see it. But, like, I had the TV on, and the Chiefs were playing – and Patrick Mahomes is on the field. And I it took me to say, I'm like, oh, this is NFL. They show the replay games. Because I'm like, there's no way Mahomes is in. And sure enough, it's preseason. And he's nine for 10 with two touchdowns. And like, just showing like, oh, yeah, I can just go out here and just, and just be better than everybody, like whatever. And I'm just like, why is he out there? Like he, like there's no reason for Mahomes to be on the field right now. And it was just frustrating. And I like, after all this money's thrown at him, it's like, why are you doing this? Like, like you know, Brady doesn't play preseason. Rodgers doesn't play preseason. Like, it. So I mean, there's sometimes it's like you're you're playing with fire a little bit, like to just give these people some reps. But I'm with Tim. It's like if it, if it's not worth it, yeah, don't don't put them in. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. J- Joey B played three snaps. He was a three and out for Cincinnati, and, and that was it. And I was like, oh, thank God he survived three snaps. Get him off the field. Take his shoulder pads away. Yeah, I 100% I get that. Uh, Tim, I don't know if you saw this or not. Detroit Lions cut fat Randy Bullock. I'm really upset for you boys. Yeah, it was his 40th birthday too. Um, he's 40? Yeah, I mean, he's been, <laughs> been shaking been, punks for a long time. <laughs> oh, Yo, he's yeah. been long snapping for the Lions for like 20 years or something crazy. And Randy uh, Bullock? No, the kicker. Oh, oh, oh. I'm thinking of uh, Mol- yeah, Reggie Bullock. Mollick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the Pistons or something. No, no, it's, it's Mollick, right? The long snapper? Yeah, I think it starts with M, I think, yeah. You're going to look it up, but uh, I meant the kicker, the one that shanked Cincinnati's field goals for the past eight seasons. Oh, yeah. Get him out of here. We actually cut both of our kickers. Figure that one out. Dan Campbell, crazy man, not kicking a damn ball this season. Going for two. We're going for two. Onside's kick. Here we go. Randy Bullock is 31, by the way. Okay. I was That's about to say, if he's 40, uh, like, how the hell does he have a job? I was going to be. Yeah. Uh, anything else NFL related you guys want to talk about real quick? Is there a quarterback battle now in Philadelphia? Oh, yeah. So this news broke. Hurts. Yeah. We were going on our Saturday show, me and Slate, uh, for college football. And shout out Ryan Richardson, Ford Score Sports. He was like, hey, by the way, boys, I don't know if you saw this, but Garden Minshew, Philadelphia. And my first thought was, holy crap, there's a quarterback battle now. Because Minshew – He's going to go in there. He's going to go boss the walls, try to get that starting job. And I don't know if they were sold on Jalen or not after the way he ended the season last year. How did he end the season? I don't think it was very good. Like, I think Philadelphia was calling for his head. Okay. I thought he – because I thought he came on the scene. Like, he came in, like, halfway through the year. And I thought he played – I think he played really well. Uh, Philly had a terrible O-line. I think they had some injuries – and they just they let like more sacks than anybody. I think they were thirty second in the league in giving up sacks. And Hertz so, was he was playing well, but it was just like there's there's obviously some pieces that are. I thought he played well, but you may be right. Is people may want his head, but I honestly I, don't think it's his fault. In some, it's way. also Philadelphia fans for for yeah, one thing. exactly. They throw exactly. batteries at Santa Claus. Yeah, but then like, I think he came off hot, and then I think the last couple of games he just. It started to wear on him. Okay, and you're right. His... When you're running for your life every snap, there's not much you can do. Pulling up his pro football reference. He has been named as Cuba back one, by the way. 
He has a what? He has like, been named as QB1. Was, that, was, that was three, three hours ago, yeah. Dude, oh, wow. Jalen or? Jaden. Okay. That makes sense. But Jalen ended the season last year, and it wasn't Jalen's fault. Um, he was actually playing in the last game where the Eagles had the win so the Giants could go to the playoffs. He was playing really well, and they sat him in the second half and put him in the third stringer. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so... that was against Washington. Mm-hmm. That's right. Philadelphia just packed in. Oh, my gosh. How did I forget? Yeah. My mom was so angry. Amy was, was throwing things. I don't Batteries, know. probably. At Santa Claus, probably. Uh, no, Sugar was barking at Santa, though. Oh, okay. It, it, it's fitting, then. Uh, I, I do stand corrected. You know, Dallas and Arizona before the Washington game, he threw for 300 plus yards. Um, now, a couple interceptions for the Dallas game. Um, but his Arizona game, he was money. He was lights out. Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe they just want just in case he gets hurt. I don't know. Good, good topic, Jay Gray. Anything else in NFL? Cool. Let's move in to college football. And if viewers, listeners, you missed it, Saturday, we're going live every Saturday morning to talk about some college football games. And this week, it's opening week. Last week was week zero with a handful of games. This is week one, baby. Here we go. We're dialed in. Big games, big matchups, and they all start Thursday night. I guess technically UAB plays tomorrow night, but we talked about Saturday. Get it out of here. We're talking Thursday night lights. So on this show, we're going to talk Thursday night games, Friday night games, leave Saturday for our Saturday pregame show. Sound good? Let's just jump right into it. We've got to talk about the powerhouse of the Temple Owls versus the Rutgers. (laughs) Scarlet Knights. Yeah, right? Uh, Rutgers is supposed to be improved from last year. They're at minus 600 favorite against Temple. Uh, Also supposed to be a 14-point favorite. What do you guys say? Wow, it, it's got to be the powerhouse after that introduction. I think, <laughs> I think it's Temple just steamrolling. Give me the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, I'm probably going Temple. Um, I mean, it's a Philadelphia team, and those Philadelphia teams, you know, they, they get mean. They get mean. That's right. Let's go Rutgers. Let's go Rutgers slate, yeah. All I know about Rutgers is they um, like to get pissed up, so I'm going to go Rutgers. Hey, I'm right there with you. The Jersey boys down in Rutgers. Uh, Yeah, give me the Scarlet Knights. I I think they're going to win. But, you know, week one college football, I don't know if I'm taking a spread here because you never know what you're going to get, especially between these two juggernauts. Uh, Let's just keep it rolling here. Citadel Bulldogs going against Coastal Carolina. What's their mascot, Tim? The cockatrices. <laughs> That'll do, pig. That'll do. Close. Uh, Coastal favored pretty heavy. They are ranked 23rd in the AP Top 25, which that blows my mind. Um, what do you guys say? So I'm, uh, I'm going – oh. <laughs> How are we? What's our order? I'll go first. <laughs> yeah, Ladies right. first. Yeah. Because then you won't spoil any of my upset picks. Um, this is one of those. So the Citadels, like, they started as, like, the football team of South Carolina, like, way back in the day. Because they're the military school. Athletic guys. Um, but I do think Coastal's got enough returners and enough experience that they should should handle the Citadel. Is it in? Myrtle Beach, the Dirty Myrtle. It is. It is the uh, yeah, Dirty Myrtle. I couldn't remember what yeah. they called it. Um, yeah, Sean yeah. declares. Yeah. Well, technically, it's Conway. It's not the beach. Yeah. I'll tell you that for free. Hot take. Not the beach. I'm okay with that. Coastal. Coastal. Tim, who do you say? Boys, you already know. Give me them dogs. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking the 33. 33- and a half underdog. Give me them dogs. My man. Taking the straight money line. I never thought I'd say this. Go Coastal because 
I, I think if we can get an App State versus Coastal ranked opponent matchup later in the season, I, I think that would just help. That just help the Sun Belt all around. So, so go Coastal, win big. Slate. Uh, yeah, I definitely have to go Coastal. Um, Citadel would have to manage the clock extremely well and stop them basically every uh, defensive uh, possession because, I mean, Citadel runs a triple option, which is just uh, – it really – I hate to say it. It really only works when you got a basically young, undisciplined team. I, mm-hmm. I love the triple option. I think it's a very fun offense, but um, – I just don't see somebody – the way Coastal played last year and the way their defense played last year, I can't imagine that they'll be undisciplined enough to – I mean, realistically, that Coastal Coastal was probably going to put up 35 on them. Uh, so, I can't imagine that the Bulldogs will be able to run that up even close. So, let's go to Chanticleers. Yeah, and once you get behind in a triple offense or triple, triple option offense – you, you ain't coming back. You've got to stay in the dogfight the entire time. And I think Coastal only lost three defensive players from last year, maybe four at most. So, yeah, yeah. They're, they're veterans. Across the pond. Um, Coastal, absolute ass whooping. It's going to be, you know, the score is going to look like a cricket score. It's going to be like 70 to 7 or something like that. You know what I mean? Just uh, don't have a clue what you mean, but I'm here for it. Ask there we go. I love it. Uh, two more powerhouses. UCF, a couple years removed from their national championship season. Uh, and Boise State from their run uh, pretty much last 10 years. Boise State, underdog by five points. This is going to be one of the close games of Saturday, I feel like. It could go either way. I might put my money on Boise here, but I want to hear what you guys say. Where is it? It is in... Boise. Oh yeah, blue turf all day. Boise. Here, here. I second that. Mm. And the blue turf really threw me for a loop. I was gonna say UCF. I think it's close, really close. Probably, probably one that uh, is worth watching. I'll take UCF. I, I do believe in them. It's a good program. Time out. My apologies. I was lied to by myself. It is actually in Florida. UCF, lock it in. I'll, I'll stick with my, my Boise pick. Yeah. Why not? I'm putting my heels in the ground. <laughs> Dug in like an Alabama tick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I actually am going with the, the Broncos as well. It was one of my favorite football teams to watch growing up. So, and I really, I've, Never liked UCF, so let's go Broncos. Me and my friends call each other Boise, um, so Boise State. You it's, just, a little, it's just a little thing when you say hello to like, oh, Boise. I said, like, boys, and then just, yeah, Boise, you know. So there we go. All Boise right. State, from that, let's get that pissed point. right up, Boise. Yeah, exactly <laughs> that. All right, Boise. Yeah. Matt, you are increasing our vocabulary so much on here, and I appreciate the hell at you for it. Mm. Um, you know, that big number one right there on your screen coming from Auburn, big cat is his name, puts up huge numbers on defense, but I'm riding the Broncos, baby. Let's go Boise state. I got a good feeling. Uh, let's move into a game that's close and near and dear to our heart here. App state ECU in bank of America stadium and Jay Gray, you're going to be there. And we're going to give you all access to our social medias, and you're going to go live for us, do whatever you want, girl. Um, you got the rain wow. for it. Bold move. Um, no, I am so excited, y'all. I haven't been to a football game, I think, since homecoming two years ago with you, Parker. So when Claudia fell asleep. Uh, yeah, okay. Yep. Um <laughs> So um, this is my first like in-person football game in two years. I'm I'm so excited. Um, of course, taking the nears. Um, one of the stores in Charlotte they made commemorative T-shirts for the occasion for the inaugural Duke's Mayonnaise Bowls, and um, 
the App State one sold out within four hours. So I think it's going to be a black and gold takeover at Bank America. I don't think the Pirates have any chance. I think they're going to be walking the plank out of there. So, hey, App State by literally a million. Let's go. I love it. Get the plank out of here. Yeah, we're going Mountaineers. Yeah, you, you got to take Mountaineers. And I'm I'm especially excited just to watch some of the guests we've had on, like Meech. And and I, I'd be lying if I said I'm most excited to see T. Henny and Cato. Like I, like, I just, I think after having them on a few times, uh, just great, great people, great personalities. Uh, excited to see what they can do on the field. So go Nears. Nears by 90. After I watched that clip of where they uh, they clipped in uh, <laughs> HC's uh, head over Saruman right before they're going into Helms Deep, that's that really solidified it for me. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't take Appalachian State, I'll be kicked off this podcast. So for that Pretty reason, that reason only, uh, App State. <laughs> Almost a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm taking our boys. Like, you got to think of all our previous guests. Meech, which I don't know if you guys saw the clip. Uh, EC offensive lineman is like, yeah, we're going to go out there and punch him in the mouth, be more physical than them. And then Meech was like, bet. Put them on notice. Like, he tweeted, he retweeted. And was like, bet. I got you, son. Uh, Michael Jordan meme, I took that personally. Uh, you know, we, we've we got Meech, T. Henny, Kato. We're coming off an episode last week with him. Always love talking to those guys. They're going to put up big numbers. Kato on defense, T. Henney on offense. Chase Bryce is going to sling that rock, baby. I am pumped for this week's game. They're going blackout too, black on black on black. It's over, ECU. Go ahead. Take the bus there. Take it out. You're going home pretty quick. Uh, I'm hammering that spread. Ten and a half, we beat them by at least 14. It'll be a home game for Op State. It oh. will 100% be a home game. Absolutely. Um, our last Thursday night game. Can I get an OH? OH. <laughs> I'm supposed to say IO, but IO. We'll, we'll work on it. It's a work in progress. Uh, Minnesota and Ohio State. Ohio State 14 point favorite. What do you guys say? St. Columbus, Ohio State. As much as that hurts my soul, I just. Mm. Ohio State, they're going to win. It's fine. Anyone but the Buckeyes, give me the soda. Tim, one of these days, we're going to keep track of our picks, and there's going to be a punishment for it. Oh, and so yeah. then you're going to really have to take this seriously. Yeah, you all bark, no bite. <laughs> you know what? This is my upset pick for, for the opener. I, I like P.J. Fleck. He's one of my favorite college coaches. Minnesota has always been in the mix for for trying to sneak in and win the Big Ten championship. I think they spoil Ohio State. I think Ohio State gets off to a slow start, and, and Minnesota plays. They got to play flawless, but I think they could do it. So I'm gonna. I think it's a game, and, and I'm gonna take the Golden Gophers. You're gonna you're gonna doubt C.J. Stroud and the Heisman hopefuls. Yeah. Bold, yeah. Well, he was, you, yeah. You got a new quarterback. You don't have Justin Fields anymore. But you also have Ohio Stadium at a hundred percent capacity. Yeah, but hey, we App State went to Ann Arbor, and we took them down. I think the Golden Gophers have what it takes. I believe in PJ Fleck. That's all Let's I keep know. rowing that boat, baby. Keep rowing. Gophers don't want it that bad. Ohio State by <laughs> 30. Uh, yeah, I'm absolutely with, with Slate. Ohio State never book, never bet against the Buckeyes. Yeah. In recent memory, it, it's hard to do it. Uh, if Ohio State tumbles, it's later on in the season. Uh, maybe against like a Wisconsin or a Michigan State maybe, but not early Illinois. on. Illinois, yeah, Illinois looked damn good, which we'll talk about them here in a second. Um, 
compared to Nebraska, which that's easy to do, I guess. Give me the Bucks. Give me that point spread because three tutties, CJ Stroud is a man on a mission to get that Heisman from Spencer Rattler. Moving on to Friday night games. Virginia Tech, UNC. This is going to be close. UNC favored at five and a half. This is the sip of death, y'all. This is the sip of death. Virginia Tech over UNC at Lane Stadium. At Lane Stadium. Lane Stadium, 100% capacity. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Lane Stadium for a nighttime game. Holy shit. It is unreal. It is it is like something I've never seen before. Inner Sandman is blasting. Those little ho- hokey birds, they love that. I don't know why, but they do. I don't know. Fuentes is 4-1 in openers. And I think his only loss maybe against maybe like Alabama or someone who was actually like favored. Um, it wasn't an upset. He's 4-1 in openers. UNC has all first timers in all of their skill positions. Their only big, big, big time returner is Sam Howell. So if Virginia Tech can manage Sam Howell and stop the run, they will win. And I think the the atmosphere, y'all, you got to watch it. The atmosphere is going to be unbelievable at Lane Stadium. It is sold out, 100% capacity, night game. Inner Sandman's going to be rocking, and that place is going to be deafening. Virginia Tech over UNC, I'm going to say by four to seven points, Virginia Tech wins. Gobble, gobble, bitches. (laughs) I'm taking Jay Gray sip of death, and I'm stone cold smashing that. Give me the Hokies. We're about to see how good Sam Howell is. I, I think that's that's what's in the cards. And I'm a believer in it. Are they rocking those helmets, Hacky? Do we uh, know? I, I, nothing, I couldn't find anything, so I just decided to, to throw that helmet on there. Man, those helmets are sick. Yeah, but bad. Sam Howell, I think he's that good. And, and I agree. I think it's going to be a great game. But Sam Howell, I'm a believer. I'm super conflicted. Because I don't – fun fact, I don't bet on either of these teams because Virginia Tech is a fucking chokies. And UNC <laughs> always just screws me over. Like, anytime I bet on Carolina, I just get screwed. Then I was going to bet on Carolina, but Evan gave Sam Howell the, the Daniel Jones treatment. So, he was <laughs> this year. And then – but I've got – Three kids that I coached at East Surrey that play for Carolina. One of them's one of those new skill players. So, what do you do? You say go Hills, Heels, and you charge I mean, on. I gotta go. If you know when Carolina does make a run this year, and we're talking BCS or shit, not BCS, but whatever Group Five New Year's Eve Bowl type shit, we're gonna have those youngins on here, and they're gonna remember who said the Hokies. And I have a student that plays at UN or plays at UNC now too, but still hey. go Hokies. Sorry, <laughs> that's fair. Um, Virginia Tech. I'm I'm sipping of death. Uh, I'm willing to ride on that train, and yeah, live by the sword, die by the sword. Sounds like an absolute banging time there. To be fair, <laughs> I was I was all locked down on UNC. I was like Sam Howe. He's coming out. He's going to try to win this Heisman. And then Jay Gray, you threw me one and threw me two. Tim, like you said, stone cold to the dome, baby. Let's go. I'm taking the Hokies. It's just the first sip of the death all season long. I'm pumped for it. Let's go, baby. Yeah, sip of death is back, baby. That's, That's what I'm right. talking about. Hey, I gobble, say, gobble, bitches. Let's go. Gotta, <laughs> cool. understand, man, at Lane Stadium is low-key one of the best. It's awesome. That, that Devin, did you play there? there? No, I, that was – I was still red-shirted, so I didn't travel or anything. But me and Tim still went. And I went, yeah. That place was bumping, dude. We need to get gobble, gobble, bitches on a T-shirt. <laughs> it's already on one. Do you want one? Yeah, please, yeah. 
yeah a bunch of my friends have shirts that literally just say gobble gobble bitches on it it's hilarious perfect yeah this i got you we're, we're gonna need to get yeah yeah, yeah. bitches yeah. <laughs> the way he said that uh and, and then our final I have game one more sip of death Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, one more Friday night, and then I'll let you get your sip of death because your sip of death is coming Saturday, right? I have another one that's Saturday, yep. Perfect. Uh, Michigan State, Tim, you grew up a Spartan fan. A little Sparty action for you. Yeah. Michigan State taking on Northwestern. Northwestern minus three favorite. So this one's kind of tough. Um Hunter Johnson, Clemson transfer, I believe, is starting at Northwestern. Correct. Um, and I love my Clemson cha- transfers. Shout out Chase Bryce. Let's go. Um, so I got that. But I have an uncle and a cousin who both went to Michigan State, and they're just a good time. Um, those games are wild. Is it in East Lansing? It's uh, Northwestern. I'm still taking Sparty. I think Sparty still has a lot to prove. It's the second year with the Colorado guy. Um, and so hopefully he's got more contact with the players. Um, I think Sparty has better athletes, probably, maybe. Um, so I'm going I'm to take Michigan State. Yeah, I agree. Give me MSU. I'm also going to say Michigan State. I feel like I would lose – even more friendship points if I went for Ohio State and didn't go Michigan State here. So let's go to Michigan State. I like to party Michigan State. Hey, we get the first pub sweep of the season, baby. I'm taking Sparty as well. Let's go Michigan State. I think they get it done as well. Um, and Jay Gray, you have another sip of death for us. Lay it on us, girl. I do. I do. So – um, I was very, very impressed, and I think this team has a leg up because they played week zero, um, and they showed out week zero. And I also think this other team is vastly overrated. Therefore, I'm taking UCLA at home over LSU. I think UCLA and the Pac-12, they're going to represent and take out the mega conference SEC, which is total bull crap. I'm sorry. Not a fan. Um also grew up an ACC fan, so just not an SEC fan. Um, but I, I, I think the Bruins, they got a game under their belt. They know how it feels. It's at home. LSU has to travel with a cha- time change. And I, does anybody know if LSU has been able to practice? Are they already out there with the hurricane? I think they actually huh? hit, hopped a plane Ooh. early. I think yeah, they, I they, they flew they, out okay. there early. Traveled out like okay. Well, kudos to UCLA, but I also finally ch- um, think Chip Kelly's still at UCLA, right? Correct, and he broke out yeah. the visor for the first time since being at UCLA. Yeah, so I think Chip Kelly finally has his players that he wants that fit into his scheme, fit into his game plan. Um, I love, I do like Coach O. I just like to listen to him, kind of mumble. Um, but I am taking UCLA and I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a really good game. Um, if I'm not passed out drunk, then I'll, I'll stay up and watch it, but I will probably be passed out drunk. Um, so UCLA, win it while I'm asleep. Let's go Bruins. Hey, I, I, I like it. Yeah, I'm sold. Give me UCLA. I'm not old. I I think it's a reach. Not not the best Jay Gray sip for me. I I'm gonna take LSU. Their LSU is only favored by three right now, so I think it's gonna be closer than you think. I think LSU yeah. could win by like seventeen. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Again, I'm conflicted. <laughs> um. I, I didn't know this. I, I, so I was looking at the like just the predictions and the odds and stuff. Um, this is the first all time head to head matchup between LSU and UCLA. Mm-hmm. Didn't know that. I had no idea. That's that blows my mind. Um, but then right under that, it's like LSU is five and one straight up in its last six games against the SEC opponent. So, yeah, let's just go. You know, I'll, I'll follow the sip of death. 
Damn it. I really want to say go Tigers, but whatever. <laughs> um, I'll pick LSU so Dev can, uh, Devin, you could say go Tigers. Go Tigers. There we go, LSU. That is really good. Dude, Devin's is money on that. Um, you know, Jay Gray, I'm with you. You sold me. If Chip Kelly, here's here's what I'm gonna say. If Chip Kelly wears a visor, then I'm I'm hammering UCLA. If he comes out with a hat or no hat, I might have to switch my pick to LSU. But Jay Gray, it's sip of death. You didn't steer us wrong very little last year. I'm hammering down with you, girl. Let's go get it. Um, two more things I gotta talk about college football related, and. This could wait for Saturday's show, but I don't want it to. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this. USC, the other South Carolina school down there, Jay Gray, which you don't like, South Carolina, is starting a grad assistant at quarterback. Nolan, he played at Iowa State, then North Dakota State. He backed up Trey Lance last year, got hired on to Beamer staff, um, and then their QB1 gets hurt. They didn't believe on any other quarterback. Grad assistant, you get the start for week one. I saw that shit today. That's awesome. Like they're playing like South Carolina. I think they're playing South Carolina State. I think it's one of those. It's it's sister of, of the South poor Carolina school. Schools. But you know, if South Carolina State or whoever they're playing comes out and wins, y'all, y'all, yo, that would, that would be glorious. <laughs> that would be wonderful for me. I'm really sorry for the grad assistant. Kudos to you for getting an opportunity. But anytime South Carolina loses. It's a really good day in my book. It really is. It just makes me so happy. I mean, yeah. that's that's fair, Jay. That's fair. Yeah. Boys, any other thoughts about that one? Nothing? Nada? Cool. Uh, let's talk about one more thing, and this is Ohio State. Quinn Errors. He is an incoming freshman, or he, he decided to go to Ohio State and forego his senior season. He decided to enroll early. He just signed a three-year, $1.4 million deal just to sign autographs. That's a hell of a gig. Good for him. Like, dude, what a legend. Hope you don't get arthritis. <laughs> Wait, how how many autographs do you think he's going to sign each year? Like, how many do you think he'll average? I would like to see the contract for sure, but if I if I had to guesstimate, I don't know. Do you th- do we think like half a million for one point four million dollars? That's got to be a lot of damn con or autographs. Well, it's over three years, so maybe one point four divided by three is like four hundred. What twenty five thousand a year or something like that? Um. I'm thinking four hundred and twenty five thousand a year. One dollar per autograph. It'll be a good bet for my bookie, that's for sure. Over under for his uh, autographs. <laughs> That'd be a headache to think because you gotta think like they do fan days. They do, you know, um, oh man. People are gonna be clawing at him for his autograph. Just hey, come sign this helmet, you know, and that marketing agency's gonna pimp him out to all these places. That's I mean, it's gonna be a lot. Uh, but hey, shout out to him. I don't think he's even 18, I think 17, signing $1.4 million contract. Good for him. Uh, anything else college football related, boys? Not college, but this is breaking NFL news. Dun, dun, dun. Cam Newton signed with Bishop Sycamore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah, we, we've got to talk about this. Bishop Sycamore duped ESPN, which apparently that's not hard to do, um, into a game, an ESPN televised game with IMG Academy. IMG Academy, who is like number one ranked, the high school, and it's been the high school for so long now. Um, And apparently Bishop Sycamore is not really a real high school, not really a real team. They played on Thursday, then they turned around and played IMG on Sunday, uh, and they have like 20, 25-year-olds playing. Um, They're former Juco kids. Yeah, like, what in the hell? <laughs> it's wild. Uh, their their head coach had a rest warrant. He had a bench warrant out for him while he was coaching. 
it, this is some longest yard stuff. Yeah, I've seen so many memes about it, and it's actually it's kind of comical that like the market, whoever the marketing agency for ESPN or recruiting agency that went out and like tries to find these games, like they they clearly did no research because like on the basis of it, Bishop Sycamore was like, yeah, we got like multiple D one athletes and stuff like that, and it it just comes out to find that they're just trash. Yeah, and like have, their only excuse was like, "Well, it's hard to find people that want to play IMG Academy," and I'm like, "Jesus Christ, <laughs> what do you, what do you mean it's hard? That's your job." I, I don't get it. Yeah, exactly. I I think we just they know snap Jay Gray and and Evan off the screen there. I don't know what happened to them, but I'm uh, back. I don't know if you can see me. I, Jay Gray. Yeah, yeah, we got you. We can see you. Okay. I'm going to fix it. There you go. Um, I just – so many technical difficulties tonight, but we're getting the kinks out. Um, I just – I couldn't believe it. Like, kids were, like, robbing grocery store for food. Um, and like you said, like, we've bashed ESPN over and over and over again. And this is gonna, just going to add just more fuel to that fire because, like, it took a very little research for the world to figure out. Joe Schmo under a rock on Tim's Reddit thread could figure it out within 30 seconds that – this is not a high school that this roster is not real. It is ridiculous. I love it. I think, you know, I'm going to do more research and get the details, but like, this is something that I just, I don't know, thrive in. This is, this is money right here. This is awesome to troll to this level. It's really inspirational. <laughs> You could draw a lot of inspiration from this. All right, let's put the so they got embarrassed fifty to zero <laughs> by a bunch of teenagers, grown men in their twenties got embarrassed. Uh, let's flip it. What happened if if Bishop Sycamore blew out IMG fifty to zero? You just say ice up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> say ice up, son. Get out of here. On to the next one. We go into the chip. <laughs> <laughs> we go into states. Uh, well, that head coach, Ron Johnson, has been fired from Bishop Sycamore. Uh, and they're still supposed to play an ESPN game like this Saturday against Duncanville over in Texas, which I don't I'm, think that's going to happen. I'm confused. How the hell is it? I don't even think it's a real school. But it, <laughs> yeah. Got fired. There's no address. Like, yeah. How you get fired on your day off, Craig? You don't even work there. I don't know, man. It's it's a mess, but I'm so glad it happened to ESPN. Um, any other football thoughts? Good segue there, Slate. Good, 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 good. I've, after that one, I've got to take a chill pill. i got to take my Pure Spectrum CBD oil, use code PUB20. I'm going to pop a gummy right now because I need it. Uh, use, you know, they have amazing products, oils, lotions, gummies, if, if you're Bishop Sycamore and you're just tired of the world embarrassing you, get some pure spectrum CBD. That was beautifully done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Matt, footy news. Yes. Do you want to start with the two big names or you want to start with the embarrassment? We'll start with the embarrassment. Um, oh, man. And that was Saturday this morning. Uh, Saturday this morning. Saturday last week. Um, it was in the it was in the parlay, and um, Man City played Arsenal. And the only way to describe it really is when you watch a nature documentary and a lion kills an antelope. It's literally that five nil, just absolute decimation. Just like I've never seen a team look so defeated when they walk onto a pitch before the balls have been kicked, and just just so one sided. It was. Re- Ridiculous. More one sided than Bishop Sycamore. Like, Arsenal had one shot in the whole game. One shot. Terrible. Horrendous. Man City, unbelievable. What do you expect? Um, but yeah, moving on to the news. Today was the end of a transfer window. Uh, and Ronaldo has signed for Manchester United, which is unbelievable. For him to go back there, it's crazy. 
exciting for me because he's going to be playing in England. That's massive. Um, and yeah, essentially, what I want to do really is actually go around the panel and ask what your favourite or the most exciting or you know which player you're looking forward to most. What's your favourite transfer when transfer of this period? You, you know, I for me, go. oh yeah, always, go, Jen. Um, yeah, um, I was just gonna say it's always nice to see someone who left kind of come back home. Um, mm. So I'm gonna go with Ronaldo in this. Um, I think just kind of hearing exactly what you said. Um, I, mm. I think it'll be really good for the Premier League um, to have him back and kind of as the face or carrying the face, but. I also don't know a whole lot about soccer, so it'll be um, interesting to follow for sure. Yeah, he wrote a really like, if you look at his Instagram post about it, he wrote a quite an emotional, you know, bit saying he feels like he's coming home. Um, and he says in the end, uh, P.S., this is for you, Sir Alex, referring to Sir Alex Ferguson, who is, treats him like a second dad. Um, just quite you know touching. So yeah, that Ronaldo is obviously the, the, the biggest move, or joint biggest move. Yeah, for me, like obviously love seeing Ronaldo come home, but Messi going to PSG, just PSG getting even richer uh, and just better, and it kind of shocked me. You know, I, I know. A lot of things went on, you know, behind closed doors and, and it was leaked and that type of stuff. But just to see Messi go somewhere else, I just it it, it struck me as odd. It just it, it's just weird to see him in that jersey, in that kit. Yeah, it 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 was weird. Like when you saw him put the shirt on, you're like, that's just weird. It's so weird. You just don't know if it's true or not. Um PSG could be apps are absolutely stacked. Um, if they don't win any t- every title they enter this year, that'd be a surprise. Surely they're going to win the Champions League. They're unbelievable, Tr- truly unbelievable. I think for me, the the best transfer I can think of is when Zlatan decided to get out of that bum league and come to the real Premier League, which is MLS. <laughs> <laughs> So Tim comment that is bloody hell. <laughs> I was talking trolls and want me to set my game up. <laughs> I believe Slatan's retired, isn't he? Nice. I think he's still playing. But yeah, um, that was quite funny. And he tore it up as well. When he still went to the MLS, he like literally tore it up. Shows the quality of the MLS. <laughs> yeah, no do it. Uh, I'm gonna mix it up and say uh Tammy Abraham. Going Ooh. to Roma, yeah, they they get a really good striker for about forty seven USD, forty seven million USD. Um, pretty pretty incredible transfer, you know. Uh, I didn't see it coming, but then again, I'm not uh, in the weeds here. So, what, what article did you just pull up <laughs> to read that? <laughs> Yo, I'm doing my research. All right, don't worry yeah. about it. Hey, Tabby Abraham joins Chelsea legend Jose Marino at Roma. Um, yeah. You know. <laughs> and to be fair, there's a few English players in that Roma team. Uh, what's his name? Fuck. Um, uh, it's not Eden Zeko, right? No. I, I know Eden Zeko actually plays there, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wait, he left. Oh. Yeah, they let him go. He's a centre back. It's a Roma centre back. Inter. I love it. But yeah, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. It's I'm blanking. But Tim, um, this is the energy we need every week for that soccer. Talk. Keep keep an eye out next in a few years' time for Chelsea to rebuy back Tammy Abraham because Chelsea will buy back all their players like Romelu you, Lukaku. You calling it now? I'm calling it now. All right, I think Tammy's staying. I think he's winning the Premier League. Well, he won't in Serie A. Tim, if I put his picture down in this section, could you pick him out from a lineup? Yeah. <laughs> Throw him up there. I don't have his picture ready, so I can't. But uh, Awesome. Any more footy stuff? What 
Anything we should look out for this weekend, or are you going to save it for the pub parlay? Uh, I'll see it. Hang on. Just one second. Any other interesting games this weekend? Uh, 20th played 19th. That's Arsenal versus Norwich. Relegation battle. That's be quite funny to watch. Um, you've got some big games. I mean, the pub parlay is going to, which I'm going to bring in is Man United to beat Newcastle. Ronaldo could be making his first game back. That that'd be to watch that for sure. That's Saturday. Uh, uh, Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Do you know yeah. what time? Early uh, in the morning for us. It'll be ten o'clock Eastern. Oh, that's not too bad. It's not bad. Um. All right. We got to talk about it, and I hate talking about these guys, but we've got to do it because it was electric news. Uh, Barstool and Showtime Sports did got like a really amazing job covering it. Paul Tyrone Woodley, the boxing match. Did any of you boys watch it? Yeah, yeah I watched it. Yeah. <laughs> Slate, you watched it live? Yeah. It was miserable. <laughs> it's, it was so bad. Dude, Tyrone or Tyrone stuck him and like wobbled him in the fifth round. I was like, this is it. He's gonna knock him out. And he just waits for him to recover. Yeah. I won't I won't go as far as to say it was it was like rigged, but I mean it wouldn't surprise me if that came out. It just it like seemed like you've got a guy who's like a championship level USC fighter, and he basically looked like I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. It looked like he had, like, zero fire to, like, actually want to go in there and try to toe-to-toe with him. Exactly. And, yeah. I mean, I know Paul landed more more strikes, but, I mean, obviously, you've probably seen the picture or the video. Um, Woodley called him a few times, and when he did, it was, like, significant stumbles, and, like, that never happened with Woodley. It's just Woodley was, like, a scared little kitten for some reason. Yeah, I, I'd be surprised if it was a fixed fight, but at the same time, like, wouldn't – I don't know. I don't know, know something, something doesn't add up no. for sure. Uh, is, like, three just, fights like, in a row. He never had any, like – he never had any, like, fire to, like, go in there and, like, actually go toe for, toe-to-toe. And it's not like the reach advantage was, like, significant. Like, it wasn't like no. he was just, going, like, getting zoned out or anything like that. It was just – I don't know. It was boring. Glad I didn't yeah. spend money on it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, any other thoughts on the fight? I'm just ready for him to fight a real boxer. Not, right yeah, not that fight, but I don't know if you guys know. Um, the Eddie Hall Thor fight, the Titan weight class fight, which I was so pumped for, has been rescheduled. It'll be sometime next spring. Assuming yeah. rehab goes as planned, but the yeah, undercard is still is still fighting. So, which the undercard is going to be for fun. The undercard, yeah. Dude, Josh, yeah, Josh Bridges, and Cole, Jacob Hefner, and then or Jacob. Have you guys seen Steffi Cohen? Mm-hmm. Do you guys know who she is, y'all? Yeah, yeah dude, the picture stuff, dude. She's a monster. She's a monster. She's got like what twenty world records in powerlifting or something absurd. Yeah, she she's a beast. It took me a second to to remember who who that would have been, but uh, yeah. she did, she dated or was married to another guy who's a, a freak of nature. I can't mm-hmm. remember his name off the top of my head. But, but she fought like a real like professional women's boxer and won. Like homegirl is a monster. So I want to see her. Just- beat the crap out of someone else. He's fighting April Maffey. I'm all in on Steffi Cohen. I don't want to get on her bad side ever. No. I know exactly who you're talking about now. Follow her on Instagram. Did not Mm -hmm. click on me. Yep. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So be on the lookout for that. It's what, late September? The 18th? Okay. I think that sounds right. Nine eighteen. Sounds right. Yeah, I think it's something like that. Uh, for pub parlay, throw our bets in there. Cue that little scrappy. Let's go do it. 
Hey, so this past week, not our hot, not our hot week, not a good week for us. This week we bounce back though. We're ready to kill it. Let's get after it. Pub parlay time. Who wants to start us off? I got mine ready. So I went with the Twins to lose last week, and they somehow beat the Brewers twice in three games. <laughs> but the Twins have the Rays at Tampa. So it doesn't matter. It's whenever Tim wants to make his pick. But I got the Twins over the Rays. On It can either be Friday night, Saturday evening, or Sunday's a day game. I do not like that. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. But you don't like that. Uh huh. But I will say, if we the parlays usually we we always do hit the the uh, the under. So I mean, you know, that'll give us a little bit of extra money in there if it. Hits. But it's I'm it's all bets we hit. That, which one? I, I'm taking Tampa over. Minnesota. You're, oh, I thought you said the Twins. Sorry if I said that wrong. I'm taking Tampa yeah, over okay. Minnesota. Oh I'm God. betting yeah. against the Twins because they suck. God, F. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, I that's, you, that's a hot – you must be on a heater right now. <laughs> that is a hot take. The man's frozen. He's like, nah, I'm going to heat it up real quick now. <laughs> I, I love it. All right, Tim, where are you picking your Astros? All right. <laughs> My Astros are taking on the over. San Diego Giants. The who? Um, <laughs> San Diego 49ers. Oh Wait, my so are they Lord. taking on the Padres? The Padres. <laughs> the Padres. Oh the Padres. They're taking on the Padres. Valdez has been on fire, I'm pretty sure. He's been just winning all these. On, on my end, the parlay, he's been winning. So um, I'm sticking with Valdez on Friday night. Let's go. I actually, I actually like that. Uh, Padres are three and thirteen in their last sixteen. So, not a bad one, Tim. Thanks, man. Well done. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to bet on the kids, uh, a coach. So I'm going to go. Carolina beat Virginia Tech. You took mine. I was going to go Virginia Tech over Carolina. The sip of death. It's okay. Yeah, I know. Um, since I can't go the other way on that, I'm going to go. You know, you know, you can have you can have the sip of death. I'm, no, I have the backup, and it might be I might be stealing now, Matt's, but I'm going to go Verstappen to to podium in the F1 race on Sunday in his home country of. The Netherlands. All right, well, little we'll race car, and I love it. I like that. I like that. Uh, mine's going to be United to beat United, Manchester United to beat to beat Newcastle United on Ronaldo's homecoming. Perfect. When is that game, Matt? Uh, Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Early Saturday morning. Yeah, ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. All right, I'm going to take a safe bet. You guys remember Owen Schmidt? Fullback, West Virginia. That's right, the runaway beer truck. I'm channeling him, headbutt myself. We're going West Virginia over Maryland. West Virginia at minus two and a half. Give me that. They'll win at least by field goal. Come on, that's easy money. West Virginia wins. I like it. Hey, and that's it for the pub parlay. We ready for our random question? Jager, I think you have us covered on this one. I do. So as you guys will see when I um, take over the Instagram, um, (laughs) my dad is going to be coming to the App State game with me. I'm so excited. Um, One of the traditions that we have together is always doing a father-daughter game day. Um, So this year is the second time he's – been able to step away from Clemson, but not really because Chase Bryce will still be there. So I think he'll still be wearing orange. But um, 
my dad and I, are, it's one of my favorite things I look forward to every year is our father got daughter game day. So guys, I am wondering what is your favorite family sports for tradition? It can be dog. It can be mom. It can be cousin. It can be sister, brother. What's your favorite family sports tradition? Um, for me, I think mine, mine's my dad as well. Uh, so dad played the app. I played the app. So we try to go to an app game every year. That's always a fun time. Uh, it was always especially really cool when we go uh, for the, it's like the alumni day or whatever, and we'd go on the field. So it used to just be him invited and Dylan and myself good to go. But now me and my dad are invited, so it's gonna it's gonna be cool dynamic to to both be able to step on that field and know we played on it. Uh, so looking forward to that upcoming. But you know, me and dad also coached together um, at the high school, so that's that's just kind of like our thing. We've always just kind of been football family and just kind of grew up in it. Well, we should have saved that for last. Uh, <laughs> some of a gun. Prior to COVID happening, me and my dad and my brother used to go to Cardiff every year in Wales. And we used to go and watch um, a sporting event called the British Speedway Grand Prix. If you don't know what Speedway is, it's like four bikes going around like a dirt track for four laps. It's pretty cool. And it happens inside the stadium. And Cardiff is a city for great nightlife. So, yeah, that was, that was great. That's absolutely great. All right, mine's got to be the Super Bowl. Dad would make my dad would make this soup. Oh my God, this chili was to die for. I'm telling you, and he had the chunky tomatoes, Devin and Parker, just for you guys. And you know, every Super Bowl he would make it. Uh, and then you know, it got to the point where he moved down here, so I couldn't spend most Super Bowls with him. But he would always make some chili. I'd try to make chili down here. Throw some Frito Lay chips in there. Oh man, that's got to be my all-time favorite thing. Every Super Bowl, I try to have some chili. Uh, just good times. That's a that's a solid one. Hey, I do like I make my chili with chunky tomatoes. I, I don't mind chunky tomatoes and chili. Wow. All right. I think sorry. mine mine is just NFL Sundays with with the family, and it's just kind of evolved over the years. I think part of it is. So my parents are diehard Panthers fans. They We moved to North Carolina in 95 when the Panthers got a team. I was two. So my parents were getting into Panthers football. And then the next Christmas, or when I was three, for Christmas, I got a Brett Favre jersey for my aunt. I think simply because Brett Favre wore number four and I was turning four years old. Like, that's literally why I'm a Packers fan. Like And, and then I just... I became obsessed. Like I was like, this guy has my shirt and, and Favre was everywhere. He was just like the, the king of the league. But over the years, my parents have always been Panthers fans. So I've always watched the Panthers games with them and they've always watched the Packers games with me. And, and it's just interesting, like how that, it, like, I know that's not the norm, but for me, that just feels like the norm. That's just, that's been my, my whole life. Um, but like, you know, I've just enjoyed watching football with them. But then even over the years, like now my routine is on Sundays, like I call my parents at four, four o'clock after the one o'clock games. And usually it's like, oh, I saw the Panthers and, and we talked Panthers or it's like, yeah, Packers play tonight or whatever. But we always have that. It's like that four o'clock phone call because one of our teams or both of our teams probably played at one. Um but then, like, I always look at the schedule. Like, I just had the Packers schedule today, and I saw, oh, Packers play the Browns on Christmas this year. They play uh, a Saturday game on Christmas Day, and I'm, al I'm already like, oh, my gosh, I'm so hyped. I get to be home, and, and I know my parents are going to watch the Packers game with me, even though they're Panthers fans. They're, they're just we're – we're an NFL family. And, and so I just – I look forward to any time we can have those, those live games – uh, whether it's Packers, Panthers, or my mom's favorite player, Patrick Mahomes, of, of all people. So it's it's just a blast. It's really fun. I'm, I'm glad you and your family love NFL Sunday because me, my dad, and my aunt 
we, we're not big fans of NFL Sunday. We always get together in the group chat and uh, complain about how bad Cincinnati <laughs> did the day at before. Um, you know, I, I think my favorite one is when I when I came down to North Carolina. You know, obviously I was like, all right, who's who's everybody pulling for UNC? I said, okay, I'm a Duke fan. Uh, and you know, when my dad remarried, um, and my mom was like, hey, I'm a I'm a UNC fan. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be awesome because I'm a Duke fan now. Uh, and so every time Duke and UNC went head to head in basketball, we always get after it. Um, one of us would be very quiet, and the other one just talk and just match it to each other, and then flip it uh, for the next game. And it was, it was always fun. And we we've kind of got away from it now that I live in Raleigh, and they're still in Asheville. But uh, it's it, I might have to bring it back this year. I might have to start the match it chalk. Good question, Jay Gray. That was fun. That was a good one. Might be the best random gotcha. question we've had. Very very wholesome. Yeah. I said that was it was going to be a very sentimental question. That's good. I like Jay Gray's fun questions. I, I really like the Masters one or the it was the golf one where you pair uh, oh. the golfer with like a just a random pairing. You've had some creative yeah. ones. Yeah, the the mascot one. Yeah, that was week. a fun one. Yeah, Jay Gray's money. Hey, yeah, that's going to do it for the show, Jay those, Gray. Those oh. uniforms are terrible. They're bad. They're real bad. They were really bad. Hey, that's going to do it for episode 66. Jay Gray, thank you so much for hopping on and joining us. We really appreciate it. We're so glad Sip of Death is back. Uh, And as always, send the sound bites. Come join us every single week. We'll take you, girl. Come join us Saturday mornings, too, if you're not too busy. We'll have our live show, uh, YouTube Live. Don't miss us. Follow our Instagram, Twitter. We have a TikTok. Fitz and and Devin are manning that TikTok. One's tick, one's talk, and they're doing it. Um, so watch out for them. Uh, but, hey, pour one up. Go bet on sports. Have one hell of a time, and we'll catch you guys next week. All right, we'll catch you Saturday. Then we'll catch you next week. Bye. Have a wonderful time. See ya. In a bit, go well.